So why is disinformation a problem? Why is disinformation a huge threat? Well, here's a little pie chart from one of our partners, MDF, which tells you what some of the disinformation from last year has been about. But Russian-aligned pro-Kremlin disinformation actors are looking to subvert Georgia, to move Georgia away from its declared course where it wants to move closer to Europe and the West. If you ask Georgians in a referendum, as was, as was done in 2008 and in multiple opinion polls since then, about two-thirds of Georgians, a huge solid, solid majority, see Georgia's future as a democratic state aligned with the West, aligned with the EU and NATO. But disinformation actors from hostile states seek to use lies, fake news, and media manipulation to try and sway that Georgian popular opinion away from that goal. Not only that, there's plenty of disinformation actors homegrown here in Georgia itself who use media manipulation, lies, fake news in order to their, their own short-term political here in gains, itself, which undermines who faith in media democratic media values and makes the job of turning Georgia into a prosperous, well-governed state more difficult. And not only that, but just in general, people who share disinformation, people who use disinformation as a tool, they create confusion, they sow mistrust, and that has huge problems. So let's talk about some of the specific problems. Disinformation sounds like a sort of fuzzy thing, but actually disinformation is a weapon in the hybrid war being waged on Georgia. I'll give you an example from this year, from July the 5th, which I'm sure most of us remember, we had this terrible homophobic violence on the main street of Tbilisi, on Rustavelli Avenue. Um, and for years, disinformation coming from, well, not just from pro-Kremlin sources, but from far-right sources in America, all over the world, has demonized LGBT people, say, portraying them as an enemy, as a threat to Georgia's way of life, to Georgia's traditions. And this is not all from Russia, of course, but if you look at this picture from our partner, uh, Myth Detector, you can see that some of the disinformation shared about Pride, about the, the Pride March that was attacked, um, comes directly from Russian sources. So it is often taken directly from these uh, pro-Kremlin news sources. Um, and, but, even, but some of it doesn't come from Russia. Some of it is homegrown, so I don't want over, over to uh, make that over, over the top. Um, but it's used for this reason to, to move Georgia away from the pro-Western course. Um, just dis disinformation on social media such as TikTok. Here we've got some TikTok um, uh, uh, screenshots which were actually used in the run-up to July the 5th to try and incite hatred, to try and mobilize these violent groups. Um, and it spreads all over Georgian social media. Uh, my friend just arrived from the UK yesterday. She's a guest at the film festival. She opened TikTok. She immediately got these anti-NATO videos instantly, um, which shows you how pervasive some of this stuff is. Um, so what happened on July the 5th, you had, social, you had disinformation on social media leading to real world violence. You had scores of journalists um, badly injured and you had one who died a few days later. So there are real world consequences, real casualties from the use of this kind of disinformation. Um, there's other types of disinformation, less political, but just as damaging. Here is uh, some Georgian, uh, Georgian fake news here. This is the former British Health Secretary, who's apparently wearing a 666 New World Order mask. And this is obviously Biden with a devil on his mask, as masks are satanic somehow. Um, but this has a real world effect in Georgia. Conspiracy theories and disinformation support vaccine hesitancy. They stop people from getting the vaccine, which costs lives. According to an NDI, NDI poll from last year, some 30% of Georgians think that COVID was deliberately created and spread in order to harm humanity. And today, that has fed into the vaccination statistics. I just looked it up. It's about 27% of Georgians are fully vaccinated. Vaccination uptake has slowed right now. We may be hitting a ceiling. And that is a result of this disinformation. So there are real-world threats to public health, among other things. So this is a serious and big and challenging threat and it's really hard to do anything about this um, it's really hard to to try and put the genie back in the bottle so you probably have come across on facebook you might have seen if you're if you're using facebook in georgia you might have seen our partners grass or mdf they're the third party fact checkers they sometimes gray out information or say this source is not trusted and stuff like that so fact checking is great fact checking is a really necessary uh, activity but fact-checking and correcting the disinformation once it's out there, that can only go so far. Because as Mark Twain famously said, a lie can make it halfway around the world before the truth has time to put on its boots. But was that actually Winston Churchill who said that a lie has, can make it halfway around the world before the truth has a chance to get its pants on? But actually, 
it was the Roman poet Virgil, and it's been infinitely plagiarized and paraphrased since then. Rumor is the fastest thing in the world. So you can see how hard it is to do this fact-checking, how fact-checking can only take us so far. So we at Zinc Network, at the GIIP, we're trying to do something a bit different. We're trying to bring together different parts of Georgian society to work together to build resilience against this threat. Um, one of the things we did, one of the first things we did, is we established a coalition of all these different NGOs who are all working on disinformation, on media development, on hate speech, on investigative journalism, all these things about promoting information integrity in Georgia. So we want to get them all pulling in the same direction. We want to make sure that their efforts are united. Um, and this coalition is now has successfully launched its uh, sort of it's the single point for advocacy, for advocating what to do about disinformation. It responds to dis disinformation events. It lobbies to change laws. It lobbies the government, parliament, et cetera, et cetera. And that's great. But that can, again, only take us so far because NGOs, while they do fantastic work, NGOs are only a small part of society and they don't speak for everybody. So when we set up this coalition, we asked these members, we asked these N NGOs who are all incredibly hardworking, what could we do to make their lives better? What can we do to help them in their fight against disinformation? And we came up with two different areas. The first one is monitoring. So what a lot of disinformation, anti-disinformation organizations do is they look at Facebook. They look at Facebook, they find a group of, uh, of fake pages, a bot network, some, uh, you know, some false narratives, and they say to Facebook, please take this down. They, and they do this quite successfully. There's been enormous takedowns in Georgia. But there's there's more to the world than Facebook. There's no capacity among these monitoring organizations to monitor Georgian TV. And as we saw from the July the 5th, uh, which was partly partially sponsored, should we say, by Alt Info, which has a TV channel, POS TV, there's all this disinformation out, out there on Georgian TV, on YouTube, on TikTok, other video content. Um, and it's impossible for the monitors. They just don't have the numbers of people. They don't have the pairs of eyes to sit down and watch all this stuff. Um, and the second big gap was in terms of investigations. When you want to investigate one of these fake networks, some of these disinformation organizations, again, it's hugely resource intensive. You people don't have the money or the manpower to do this. And that's in spite of the fact that most information, most much pertinent information in Georgia is public. So business ownership, property ownership, donations to political parties, tenders, all this stuff is in the public domain in Georgia but it's a nightmare to look up. It's a manual task. You have to go to a specific database, look it up, and then if it changes, if ownership changes, you have to go back again. And so we, they wanted a way that this could be perhaps automated, that all the different databases could be brought together and there could be some sort of updated thing. So these were huge gaps that we identified, but we, being a sort of communications people, we are not the people that can solve this. So we realized that we would have to develop uh, different relationships with different types of people, get different skills. And we realized that Georgia's tech community is a huge source of untapped talent. There's so many clever people out there, and many of them have very strong feelings about disinformation and the threats to Georgia. But unfortunately, just like the NGOs, they exist in separate bubbles. And so what we decided to do was try to bring them together. And that's when we work with our delivery partner, Startup Grind. You're going to hear from my colleague, Gio, uh, shortly. And we decided to come together to appeal to the patriotism of the tech sector, to appeal to the sense of social responsibility. And we came up with an idea for the counter disinformation innovation competition. So we based those, these two challenges on the two areas um, that I discussed before. Uh, a transcription tool, something that would transcribe the video so that you wouldn't need to spend hours watching it. Um, uh, that would be the first Georgian speech to text tool. Doesn't really exist. Um, and obviously, this has huge applications beyond disinformation, but the monitors really need it. And aggregating the databases, consolidating all that public information in one place, flagging data changes. It's a great thing for Georgia, but it's equally a great thing for other jurisdictions as well. That could help investigative journalists all over the world. Um, and we, we had a number of incredibly good entries. We had 10, I think, really quality entries, narrowed it down to four. We actually ended up giving three prizes away because, not prizes, excuse me, funding away, um, because the quality was so great. So we, we, we awarded 42,000 in total. That's going to be awarded uh, funding for each, uh, for each of the winning entries. And you're going to hear from those winning entries in a minute. I don't want to spoil it. They're going to demonstrate the software. It's incredibly cool. Um, uh, but one of the most important things that I want to say that came out of this competition is the partnerships we forged in doing this 
So the winning teams have really partnered up with the users, with the NGOs. They've developed relationships. They understand each other now. So the tech sector now has a sense of what the civil society organizations need in order to perform their task better. And the civil society organizations have a better sense of what's realistic and how to work with tech companies and startups. So that's a really powerful union of these two parts of Georgian society, which is going to come together to help the fight against disinformation. Um, uh, and, uh, and yeah, and so this has been a great success, which you're about to see just how much of a success it's been because these software tools are incredibly powerful. Uh, and so much so that we're doing it again next year. So uh, if any of you have any great ideas, we are here. Um, I'm going to be here, Gio's here, and also Anna Abzianidze is sitting here. You can just come up and scan the QR code at any point and uh, talk to us about any of your ideas. Uh, and without further ado, I'd like to give over to, uh, to Georgi from Startup Grind, who's going to tell you a bit more. Thanks very much. Thank you all, and uh, this is going to be all for whole my talk, and I'm going to be no, I'm not going to be talking too much though, but make sure that you if if somebody's from Zoom, just make sure that you scan that which is not here anymore, <laughs> but make sure that you spiritually remembered what happened. So as Will said, when when Zinc Network approached Startup Grind, it definitely hit a nerve for me, because I had a personal story that was very sad. So I had a childhood hero who who is mostly responsible for who I am now, what, what I've achieved and everything. And then he was the person I was looking up to and I saw him succumb to propaganda and disinformation and he has become like etalon of uh, homophobia, xenophobia, racism, whatever you want to call. So this is a very sad story personally for me. And when they approached me, I was like, where do I sign up? Um, but then I was like, so what do we do? Like, it's, it's like, let's just do something, but what do we do? And then, and then if, if, if it was not enough, uh, Zinc Network kind of put uh, the weight on me as well. They, they said like, hey, do you want to look at the report that we just uh, consigned? And I was like, yeah, let's, let, let's do that. And the report was far worse than I anticipated anything. So if you have a chance to look at that report sometime in your life, I can guarantee you that you're going to be depressed for quite some time. So our involvement as a startup grind was to involve private sector in this uh, information. And I was pretty sure that, as Will said, the, it would hit a patriotic nerve. And I, I engaged with uh, Georgian tech ecosystem. And they made me proud. They actually delivered. They showed up. They were, they were like, what can we do? And, um, and I have to say, even though enthusiasm was high, after 5th of July, it went overboard. Instead of me pinging people, people were pinging me back like, hey, Gio, how can, when can we start? What can we do, et cetera, et cetera? And it went into overdrive. Sadly for everyone, sadly for the country, but it is how it happened. And because of that, I have to, and because of COVID, and because COVID has flattened the world, um, and I'm not spreading the disinformation, I'm just referring to Zoom only. Uh, a lot of people, not only local tech ecosystem, but people outside of Georgia, but Georgians, also wanted to get involved. And out of 10 people who were participating in the tech challenge, a couple of them were outside of Georgia, in Georgian diaspora. So that means a lot of things to me. And, and the reason why this happened is before 5th of July, Everybody in the tech sector kind of knows that the situation is bad, and we're like, ah, we should really do something about it, but it does not personally affect us. I mean, unless you're me and you have some personal sad stories, obviously. Uh, but after 5th of July, we realized that, hey, we, the, especially, no, I'm not saying about everyone, but obviously, majority of tech sector has made it through, have moved over the first step in the Maslow pyramid. So we want to live in a country where we are proud of, where we want our children to be, and especially, as I said, because of COVID, people don't need to leave the country. They ac actually, people are returning to Georgia and living here, and they want to make this country a better place. And I have to say, democracy is definitely hard, especially with a lot of troll boats and armies fighting against the, the Western civilization, but it is definitely worth fighting for, and this is what has been shown throughout the whole Georgian tech ecosystem. So as being Startup Grind, we, we approached this in a startup -y way, and we were like, this is a really big problem, this is a bit confusing, so let's start with something that we can, there is a big pain point and we can easily deliver. And then let's continue conversation, how to make it 
much more efficient and how to arm more people and how to diffuse it to a whole Georgian society. So we uh, part uh, partnering with Zinc uh, and with the coalition, we had some interviews and analyzed what the tech, uh, what the media monitoring people needed because they are the people fighting for us. They are in the trenches of war, but the problem is that they are fighting with bare hands. They don't have anything. They just have rocks where the troll armies are fighting with advanced technology. And it's very hard to fight. And they have like, just with one solution that we mentioned, speech to text, we will be able to free up 20 more people so they can work on something much more meaningful. So we, we partnered with them. We understood what the problem was and those were the challenges. And we started working on that. But as Will mentioned, this is, this is just the beginning. So we, it just bought us time to better understand how tech sector can be better involved. So actually, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that sometime soon enough, here will be link again and the QR code. So make sure that you scan, even if you're not sure, even if you are hesitating, even if you are scared, just want to be involved, come in there, say hi, we'll figure out a way. Even if you just cheer us up, that means a lot because the fight is huge and we are in a huge disadvantage because the tools that we are trying to create some of them obviously <clears throat> exist in uh, in the in the developed world but some of them are actually uh, non-existent so far and we're just at the forefront of the innovation so for example the next speaker that's going to be after me who's going to be present this we are aiming you know i mean they are aiming <laughs> obviously not me i'm just i'm just doing some sauce to to make them uh, look good but they are aiming to have an error rate significantly better than google so this means something that we we as a georgian society can come together and create something that is meaningful and that is powerful enough to compete with the troll armies and disinformation and uh, we have four more years. Make sure that I, I'm going to repeat this a couple of times again and again and, uh, until I bore you to death or you join this uh, Discord group. So make sure that you join. But this is not only people here, but also if you are abroad, you've been out of the country for a long time, you always wanted to contribute. Now is your chance to join this and help us become something much better, maybe with your experience, maybe with your connections. Who knows what? Just come in, say hi, we'll figure something out. And the good thing is that the things that we are creating now, it can be sustainable. It, it does not need to be just one and done for NGO, for competition, or for something like that. Because as I mentioned, a lot of tools does not necessarily exist out of, outside of Georgia as well. And uh, obviously some transcriptions, some, some of, I'm not saying everything, some of the things does not exist outside of Georgia as well. So there is a chance that that we can build upon this and the companies can build upon this. But more importantly, which I think is much more important, is this could become a foundation for you guys there, out there. And you can build something on top of this, especially, especially the second participant who, is, who has moved in the NGO direction and he's uh, building the open source platform for anybody to plug in. So this could be a stepping stone for you to get involved as well. So it is. it does not necessarily need to be some people fighting out there in the trenches and just cheer them up from time to time. You can also get involved. It does not matter how big or small. You can get involved already, and you can contribute. You can use this as a platform to build on top of this or do whatever what you want. Share this with your uh, older relatives, uh, disinformation, victims, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I'm not going to bore you more. I know that a lot of people, a lot of you, are interested in, to see the demonstrations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I have to, I have to uh, tickle your fancy if I'm British enough. And uh, we're going to go into more depths of some technology and what problems and the challenges and everything and everything. But make sure that you are noting down some questions. If you're on Zoom, please make sure that you don't forget and ask right away. If you're here and if you have any questions, make sure that you note it down so that in the end we can answer them. So we're not gonna interrupt too much uh, while we're speaking, but at the end, we're happy to answer your questions, go listen to your feedback, get into the discussion, whatever you want to. We, ha we should have some time by the, by the estimates. So, so, uh, I want to introduce the first participant somewhere over there, which, who is going to be on Zoom. Vato Hudushauri, he is from WaveTech and is, as I said, 
they are the company who is who are trying to beat Google at being better than Google. So they want to have a better error rate than Google has at this point in Georgia. So I think this is this is pretty amazing, and I think they deserve a round of applause. <laughs> Not sure if Awato, are you here? Can you hear us? Yep. Yes, yes, I'm here. I hear you. A search speaker. It means, for example, in same example, it's interview. We can uh, upload the voice of interviewer, for example, or guest, and then our program is um, uh, will search only that person's moments out of this video or audio. Uh, from the text we uh, we get, how we are getting with our technology, uh, we can process like that. We um, the, let me change the screen. Uh, from the text, we can uh, make these things. Uh, to na uh, named entity recognition, right? Polarity detection, uh, that means uh, if like uh, some spatial phrase was negative or positive or so on, or we can search something with keyword, with, with uh, press search, for example, we can find with program uh, main details. Um, if something is about COVID virus, if something is about elections or like where is person working or where is it from, uh, stuff like this. Uh, also from audio, we can uh, make, um, uh, we can create the text and uh, as I already said, uh, um, to search speaker and stuff like this and uh, out of this text, we can make then uh, processions on this text. Uh, from the day we got our grant for our project, we had of course spatial benchmarks and uh, uh, I'm happy to say that like we um, overdid our benchmarks, like we made uh, more than, uh, we made 30 to 40% more, for example. Uh, for our aim, for the same, we needed um, annotation, of course, and we, uh, uh, and now, like uh, for this moment, one our one annotator is annotating 14 hour uh, data uh, per month, and it's quite huge uh, result. We have 15 of them, and our aim was to uh, to have 500 hour annotation, but we have uh, almost 600 hour. And like uh, Gio was talking about uh, word error rate. And like in our case, like it was first the 25, uh, but now actually on this slide it's 40.5, but uh, now we have 9% word error rate, which is quite huge, res quite huge results, and we are still progressing it. Yeah, uh, stage two benchmarks, uh, like in, in, in next six months, we are going to uh, we are going to improve our uh, technology, and we are going to uh, change our word error rate. And um, yeah, uh, we are we are gonna make it at five uh, percent. Uh, and to make it uh, available for uh, people like in everyday use. Uh, and uh, uh, 
Yeah, and it will be already a like world class competitive program. Uh, and like things we learned from our work in it, uh, experience we got, like firstly is that annotation is really difficult to make world class annotation. And we, it took so much energy of us and so much financial resources as well. Uh, second thing is that uh, deorization is extremely in immature in the academic enterprise world. It means that, like for example, deorization uh, error rate. Like our uh, now we have like uh, 25%, and our aim in six months is to make it uh, on uh, 15%. But in the world, like um, in like Western world, even on English language, like uh, this uh, error rate is quite. Um, huge because like in this field we don't have like uh, super cool achievements in the world yet yes <clears throat> also we, we we built end to end text processing uh, pipeline in a week in just one week and like this is um, really it was unbelievable um, aim uh, quite unbeatable aim but we did it and our um, it's super problematic that zero point uh, five pipelines is not really enough. So like we, we were um, spending so much resources to make some like uh, parallel computing to get enough uh, enough things done for our project. And as Gio said, like uh, we are um, we are beating Google even in it in a word error uh, result in Georgian language. And like we have most accurate Georgian uh, speech to text in the world. And like Google margin is uh, Google word error range, uh, rate is thirty percent, and our as for now is nine percent, but we are going down to five. That was it. Uh, that was it actually. And thank you for uh, listening. And uh, whoever is interested in it, you can visit our website wavetext.ai and check like text to speech, also speech to text, and you can think how uh, you can use in your field this stuff. So thank you, Vato. And uh, if we have time in the end, maybe we can do some demos as well. Uh, and as I said, so we people are doing some amazing job, like beating Google at their own game. So it's not uh, it's it's not nothing, definitely. And um, and I know you may have a lot of like technical questions, and so make sure that you don't forget that. Mark that down. Write in Zoom, and we're gonna uh, ans try to answer them. And so the next person, next speaker, is going to be David Janezashvili. As I said, so this is the person working on the NGO route, making it more open source and available for everyone to build on top of this, use this in a way or so. And uh, as I said, there is, there are a lot of ways you can get involved. If, uh, as Vato was saying, if you are not a technical person, but you really want to help, you can volunteer to do this uh, annotation. If you have a perfect computer, you can you can lend it out to. There is a lot of computational need for for them. So there are there are a lot of ways you can get involved. It's not something abstract. It's not something in the clouds, even though it is in the clouds literally. But so please be involved. Discord server questions and. I'm going to move on to Dao Janezashvili, who's going to do some, uh, who's going to show you what can be done in the open source and NGO world as well. So, welcome, Dao. Introduction. Can you hear me well? Great. Um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, all right. Thank you, uh, Dao and uh, George, for your introduction. Dao, uh, Dao, can. Um, um, can can you lower the mic level or something like that? Because it's like it's a bit too noisy. All right. Is it better? Much better. Much oh, better. Great. Now we can turn the volume up here, <laughs> and we can find the equilibrium. All right. That's like technologies. Uh, all right. Um, Thank you for your introduction, Will and George. It was really interesting to once again highlight um, all these challenges uh, in this fight uh, against disinformation. So we are one of the lucky like, teams who were uh, selected during this challenge. And uh, as Georgi mentioned, uh, our approach uh, is to build an open source ecosystem for data collection. 
and uh, like it gives uh, possibility for us to engage in uh, engage with lots of actors um, in Georgia and uh, outside of Georgia so we have an expertise in the field uh, we are working for in the last several years with um, some international organizations and UN agencies uh, in the field of like social media analysis and now we're really glad to have the chance to work with you know, like Georgian organizations and support them and provide them with tools they really need. Uh, so like uh, I would uh, highlight a few of benefits of making our projects open source. Uh, we're not only making our tools open source, we are also open sourcing our data sets and models that we are training. So anyone can uh, use it uh, um, in their own tech projects and anyone can run our software uh, on their local computer on their local platforms so to uh, make it more appealing to a wide diversity of user types we are creating uh, several uh, kinds of um, like integrations and several entry points so first is minimal for minimalist users who are like less technical and uh, they don't really like to do any coding uh, or stuff and uh, we're building a simple web interface that i would uh, mm, show you at the end of the presentation uh, at the next level if you are already using uh, any kind of uh, data analysis tools uh, we are mm, building integrations for Tableau and Power BI and Google Data Studio. So after this data is collected, uh, you can uh, plug it into your favorite data analysis tool and do more in-depth analysis. And uh, at the like top end of uh, the um, like advanced users and uh, um, uh, we're also building software packages uh, to make uh, it possible to use um, uh, our approach in any programming language of your preference or like notebooks. So uh, using this approach, we're trying to cover as much um, researchers and uh, like tech people um, as possible and involve them in the process. So uh, now I would highlight several challenges that we've faced um, during this process and uh, the challenges that any uh, anyone who's involved in social media analysis or media analysis uh, would face at some stage of their research. So first of all, uh, you need to discover the data and uh, like as the social media platforms are vast, the waste and so uh, it needs like huge human resources to go and uh, search um, like all the platforms and uh, like find the channels that hold the information they're doing research on. Uh, we are also supporting to build uh, the process of building taxonomy like which keywords are more important to search for and uh, which uh, keywords helps you to find uh, the uh, data you are interested in. So next part is data collection. After you find your channels, you need uh, some uh, like persistent tool that would give you possibility to collect the data in automated manner and uh, do it like um, each hour or each day. Uh, so we we'll build an integrations for uh, different uh, social media platforms and uh, like broadcasting uh, channels and we're aiming to cover more of them um, and like uh, give more possibilities to our users. Uh, after uh, you have collected uh, all the data and then comes the interesting part uh, uh, where we are trying to extract as much information from uh, collected data as possible at this stage we are building on like solutions that um, wavetech has um, like uh, shown to us uh, in the previous presentation so after we've collected the video content and not only text content we are extracting uh, the text from video and doing um, different kinds of uh, information extraction uh, like processes with this text uh, so together with uh, like text analysis we are also doing video analysis we are like doing face recognition and object recognition for example if you are 
interested in the research of like far right uh, sector um, uh, you can uh, like find in the videos any uh, like flags or symbols from far right uh, um, uh, like act actors uh, and uh, it would uh, like make life much easier instead of watching hours of video you can do it like out of box uh, of course we are doing like entity extraction so you would be you're able to like detect organizations or events or like persons mentioned in the um, send text and uh, what's like really interesting uh, the more we have developed a model to detect the hate speech targets so if text contains uh, some hate speech we are able to detect who is targeted in this text so it comes uh, comes really useful to lots of uh, like tasks together with it um, we are doing like uh, we have uh, like dozen of algorithms here uh, and models uh, that we've trained and uh, right now we are working with the local ngos and uh, trying to detect uh, the classes of um, texts that you know, they are uh, doing their um, research for and uh, uh, we would also um, uh, ask you to uh, reach out in case uh, if you are working in the field and uh, if your like daily routine is uh, like classifying uh, some text data and you have you know, some sufficient amount of like labeled data sets uh, we would be more than glad to to train a model for you and uh, uh, also integrate this classification in our tool. Uh, once again, the challenge uh, that WaveTech mentioned is also a great challenge for us. Uh, it's uh, not like for English or like some, any larger language. It's not um, models are not out there. So for Georgian language, we need to label all these data sets uh, by ourselves and we have teamed up with a um, like number of students uh, and uh, like researchers uh, who are uh, supporting us in, us in this labeling process uh, to like build you know, more models and to extract more information from data. Uh, after like this step, you have collected data, you have extracted the information, then you need to somehow visualize it. Now, in this case, uh, as I've mentioned, we build our like minimalistic user interface that gives you like overview of uh, uh, the things that are going on on social media. But together with it, uh, you can, as I mentioned already, use any kind of tool uh, that you're already using. Uh, so, like uh, now, let me just show you a few screens from our application. Uh, our work is still in progress, so please be patient in case of anything goes wrong. So now I'll try to plot some stuff here. Um, put on the map posts. Uh, mentioning locations in Georgia from last five days. Yeah, here they are. Uh, all right, then let's go here and uh, try another filter. Show me the posts by Radio Freedom about coronavirus from last five days yep here they are yeah that was like brief uh, um, like showcase of our tool it's like culmination of what's happening in the background this data collection and information extraction but at the end of the day you have this simple interface that you can work with thank you so much and over um thank you david uh, and uh, we are um, gonna entertain you before we have uh, as long as we have technical break we need to switch the computers to be able to showcase you some other stuff but did you know that and obviously you did not because you were not involved in the project but did you know that um the usaid was so excited about this project and uh, the caliber of people being involved in this project that they want us to showcase and do a, do a presentation for them in their headquarters. And not only that, but did you know that 
the UN head office wants to partner with us and with David's NGO and open source initiative. So they've allocated uh, some people already who are working in parallel because obviously, obviously the UN is interested in the Caucasus region, et cetera, et cetera. So they are already partnering with us to make better tools to not only do whatever we wanted to do, but broaden this a bit more and make it more inclusive and much uh, powerful to involve and in, in include some more Caucasian hate speech, war crime, et cetera, et cetera, that was happening relatively recently near our borders. So this is pretty cool. I think that in just a short amount of time, a lot of uh, heavy lifters want to be involved and uh, and I think my time is up. Uh, I don't need to entertain you more. But uh, so with that, I want to introduce our next speaker, uh, Kathy, uh, so from Pulsar AI Georgia. And this is so cool that Pulsar AI was one of the first, not one, probably the first Georgian startups who were successful and exited and got acquired by Spin Car. And they did not forget about their roots. So they still care about the country they're living in. They want to still to give back. They want to contribute to make our country a better democracy, a better place to live. So having said that, I want to announce Katy from Pulsar. Hello, nice, nice to meet you. Yeah, our topic is now how to detect disinformation using an automated dashboard. Uh, so about Pulsar, Georgi already mentioned <laughs> about Pulsar, but I, I'll add just Pulsar has a history of building powerful SaaS products for Georgian financial institutions, governments, insurance companies, and etc. Uh, so uh, now regarding disinformation, my colleague just already mentioned everything about disinformation, and uh, what is the ma main pain, pain point? Uh, media researchers, monitors, and analysts are looking for information which are widespread across different websites, and you already know it. Yeah, and they are trying to detect suspicious parts, but it's too hard because. But there is no solutions. Yeah, there wasn't no solutions <laughs> yet. Uh, that brings and visualize this data in one platform, and there is no solution for organizations that seeks more visibility. Uh, and you, you know that this is time-consuming job, and also everyone knows that uh, mine does not grow on trees, and uh, so this is main problem, yes? And how we solve this? How, how we will solve this problem? Uh, we have created the biggest database hub uh, from the trusted and primary sources, and uh, you will agree that a primary source is very important because you can get all kind of information from different websites, but um, the main goal is to get this information from primary sources such as revenue services, procurement service, state audit office, etc., etc. Also, find out relationships between specific or pro-Russian actors or companies. Get real time, uh, get real time updates because users or auditors or um, analysts should uh, uh, also should handle these uh, updates and should react on these updates on time. Uh, collect and visualize real time mentions from social media and from different media web pages. Uh, and uh, what have we done is that we created automated dashboards and what is the possibilities? So users can segment databases based on their needs and represent them as a separate project. You can create projects uh, for progression activities and consolidate all people or organizations related to the topic. In this, so, and in the same time, they can create another project for election study, for example, or for persons or, and their relations based on their interests. So uh, there is lots of possibilities, like we have 2D or 3D dimensional uh, representation and we have um, the sources um, like um, Georgian sources and Russian sources as well. Um, we get information about donations, tenders, histories, real time, we uh, send real time notifications to the users and many more. Now uh, let's go to the dashboard and I'll show you what we have done. And uh, it's better, maybe one minute. So, um, Sorry, here is our dashboard. You can sign up or just sign in. Uh, 
let's go inside. As you see, here is uh projects a list of projects and those projects are created just for test purposes nothing else okay we have uh, here pro russian uh, movements and the pre-elections so pro russian movements here is people and companies and organizations uh from russian sources but let's see what do we have in this project here here is lots of uh, not lots of data, but much more and interesting. So you can see here, for example, one person uh, who is a businessman, Georgian businessman, and we can uh, check what we have and what kind of information do we see here. So here is uh, his nationality. Um, he is in blacklist, and uh, later I explain what is the blacklist and I want to see more data uh, about him so ah uh, sorry mm. sorry sorry uh, I'll share it in zoom um, okay Ah, here is, yes, here is uh, Georgi Topadze. Okay, here is his info. Shears uh, in companies. Here is company, sorry, here is lots of companies. And uh, you know, when you get some kind of information about person, then you can get more and more information related to this person and expand this data and you just need to click on plus button and get those information oh okay the, he has also donations he donated lots of so democratic georgia uh political it's a political party and uh, here you can see latest articles from google uh, so um and uh, now uh, we see that uh, Georgi Tobadze has donations. Also, um, for example, here is um, uh, also Kahi Kaladze, head of Tbilisi. Uh, maybe you know him. Uh, him, uh, and he is he is also he don also uh, donated this Georgian dream, and also he has lots of companies. Uh, and uh, yeah. And uh, with this uh, database, you can find out all kinds of relations between people. Uh, you can just uh, create custom relations as well. If you know, for example, you can uh, just uh, relate to kind of persons. Maybe you know that these two persons are siblings, for example. You can create this relation. So you can uh, collect or kind of information from uh, trusted sources, as I mentioned. And also, you can add yourself. Uh, uh, from where comes those persons? Maybe you will ask, right? So we have blacklist here. Here is the persons tab. Uh, so uh, first of all, you need to add the specific or pro-Russian persons, or I don't know, companies as well. Here is also a list of companies in this application. And after that, you will get all those information. Uh, maybe we will add someone, uh, maybe you are interested in someone, uh, I don't know, if you know someone, someone's personal idea, we can add and just <laughs> see what kind of uh, uh, maybe the relations they have or... Uh, uh, yes, um, or I don't know, I, I'll add someone. Ah, okay, tell me your uh, idea. Yeah, and uh, so there is the sources. Uh, uh, for now, we have only Georgian and Russian sources, but later we will add another Ukrainian or European or some kind of, so, another sources, yeah. Um, uh, can you tell me your, uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, so, um, 
it seems it needs time. You have lots of information <laughs> in real new services. <laughs> yeah, here it is. <laughs> here you are. So, okay, let's go. What do you have? So here is your info. You have shares in companies. Yeah. Uh, you are director, chairman. <laughs> also, uh, wow, you have donations. <laughs> wow, you are a political person. <laughs> and the articles. Wow, there's lots of articles about very famous person. Ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, let's go to the graph, for example. Uh, search Georgi here. Here is Georgi. Yeah, here is his uh, shares and uh, his companies. Uh, also, I see that he donated this one. And also, someone donated this uh, this uh, political party. Ah, yeah. Those are not you, of course. Those are called <laughs> and also Topaze. Yeah. And if you are interested into this, for example, Georgi's uh, company, or yeah, you can just click expand here and get more information now about this company. So, um, as you can see, you can just check, get some kind of information, so uh, get relations, and yeah, here is, mm, okay, <laughs> this is the LTD blendery, yeah, and here is also shareholders, and the same way also, if you are interested in Russia, so into this person, you can just again click expand, and now you can move and go his information. Show sorry, no, get his information. Yeah, and uh, it's really I think, and I hope that it really will help our analysts and media monitors, and I uh, I don't know. Uh, users who work on this information uh, to find relationship, find out relationships between those persons and uh, try to find out suspicious parts, etc. etc. So um, that, that's all right now. Uh, and thank you very much. Okay, maybe that's not on. Um, thank you, Ketty. Um, uh, I'd like to thank all, uh, all our amazing teams who have demonstrated their powerful software today. Sadly, it was, uh, it was the first. It was, um, it was WaveTech. Their servers were down, so they couldn't show you the speech to tech. But if you go on their website tomorrow, I guess, um, uh, you'll, be able to, you'll be able to check that out for, them, for yourselves. Uh, if we could get the QR code back up. Um, uh, so yeah, just once again, before we close, there, if there's going to be questions, I hope you do have questions. I think Gio can field them because he's much more technically minded than me. But I would just like to end by thank you for coming and saying, please, 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 please scan our QR code. Please send us your ideas. Get in touch. This is like, we are subscribing. We are what we're putting the word out for some wild card ideas for the next challenge. So we're not. We're going to go back and we're going to talk to our CSO partners, like we said. But we're also going to so solicit anything from the general public. So give us your ideas. Talk to us. We'd like to start a relationship. Thanks so much for coming.